Greetings, everyone, and welcome to The Spirit Side. I'm Paul James Caden, and today on the show, we are going to be talking about your personal spiritual experiences. And I think this conversation today uh, really will be dealing with spiritual matters, but it's also a concept I really feel goes outside the parameters of the spiritual and into the everyday affairs of our lives as we live them in this current world. You know, this really is a time in our history where we don't have a shared sense of reality. And that has to do with religion, it has to do with politics, it has to do with the way we see the world. There are so many people who might see a thing, yet they will deny that it ever happened or deny that a certain event took place. And it really is uh, near impossible to argue with people who have that particular mindset. And it's really difficult to prove the truth or what is true to them. No matter how much evidence you present to them, they will say it doesn't matter or it doesn't make sense or that doesn't mean anything. And, uh, you know, that's a really interesting mindset because I, I really seen this thing personally begin to uh, germinate in society back in the year 2000. That was really the time starting on the internet where if you went into these chat rooms or, you know, you commented on an article or a video and someone with an opposing view uh, commented on your comment and said, oh, you know, that's, you know, that's unproven, you're mistaken, you don't know what you're talking about. And you said, well, no, wait a minute. And you listed sources and articles and scientific findings or historical facts they would look at those things and then write back to you, well, that doesn't mean anything. And uh, I remember 21 years ago saying, boy, if this is a mindset that uh, begins to eventually permeate society as a whole and comes out from behind the internet, boy, what a mess we're going to be living in. And uh, that day is here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, that day is definitely here. And you know, it it's something that's really shaking a lot of people when it comes to their sense of reality, when it comes to their faith, when it comes to their own personal religious and spiritual experiences. But we really can't let these things shake us or make us doubt ourselves. And I really hope if you're that kind of person that is holding on to maybe an alternate sense of reality, not listening to what others are saying, you know, take a step back. You know, none of us are infallible in this life. I do my best on these shows to speak the truth. And I took a show down uh, about a week ago where I quoted a couple things that were um, not quite so, and I, I pulled the show. You know, we have to be honest with ourselves and say, hey, maybe most of what I said was good, but not all of it was true, so I have to be able to step back and say that was wrong and retract those words, retract those beliefs, change my view. It's only natural that we do this, and we can't evolve and grow as people and as spiritual individuals, spiritual beings, if we lack the capacity to do that. And, you know, we have this whole, you know, thing in the United States. And again, I know some people will bristle when they hear this, but 
I use this as a modern day example of President Donald Trump and the people who stormed the Capitol on, uh, was it January 6th, uh, you know, of uh, 2021, and the Republican Party in the United States, which I disagree with, you know, are just throwing all in with Donald Trump, no matter what he says or what he's done, and they're even denying that this siege on the Capitol were Donald Trump supporters. They were saying that the uh, the protesters were orderly. They didn't see any evidence of Trump supporters in the crowd. Meanwhile, there were you know hundreds of Trump Pence uh, flags and banners being held up. Uh, you know they deny the reality, and it's almost like the attitude of the abusive husband you know who abuses his wife who cheats on his wife who does all these terrible things and then when she confronts him about it he says well I don't want to talk about that that's the past I want to move forward you know that's the past I don't want to focus on the past but then they go and they repeat those same heinous treatments to their spouse you know, and that is an excuse, and, and that is a really, I think, a sign of really bad character that you want to put things under the rug and just say, well, I don't want to talk about that. That was the past. You know, and meanwhile, something in the past could really hurt a lot of people, maybe even an entire country, and you're going to deny it and lie. You know, so that's where we're at, you know, not only in the United States, but across the world. And like I said, I'm very sorry if that ruffles some people's feathers out there. But we really don't have a shared sense of reality in the world anymore. And that brings us to our major point. You know, how critical people are of religion. You know, they call God, you know, the Santa Claus in the sky, the fairy godmother in the sky. Anything spiritual is magical thinking. And there are even some religious people in certain religious groups who really uh, disparage other people's personal spiritual experiences in their, in their lives. They downplay it. They say that it's evil. They're being deceived. They're being maybe somehow delusional. And so it's hard to, you know, for some people to hold their head above water in all of this. They start to question themselves, you know, did I really see what I thought I saw? Uh, What I thought was the truth, is it really the truth? There's so many people telling me I'm delusional, I'm wrong, it doesn't matter, that was the past, you know, all of this type of thing. And let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, this kind of thing is a classic, old, tried and true brainwashing technique that has been used by cults and even our own government and advertising industry for years. They know how to break people down. They know how to break society down. And the funny thing is, those individuals who consider themselves to be truthers are are as much caught up in the deception as everybody else. Because these were people that didn't trust the government, but now they're all about trusting the government or certain parties and politicians. And that, how strange is that? How very strange is that, that they started out saying that the government was the enemy. Now certain parts of the government are God's agents and saviors of the country and saviors of the world and... What is right before their very eyes, they will deny and say it never happened. They never said that. You know, they were never there. This, 
it's just a media spin, you know? It's really, really creepy. And hey, listen, I don't know if this was something that was done to a lot of people by the government or the people did it to themselves or these truth communities, you know, who are very uh, cult-like. I've talked about that in the past, uh, permeated and just re recruited a lot of people into their cult in society. You know, I know QAnon had uh, a big influence on a lot of people. But something in the world went very much awry. And something is very wrong. And a lot of people are being broken down and changed and questioning their own experiences, their own views. But what does this have to do with your personal spiritual experiences? Well, first and foremost, it is a proven fact that an individual who has a strong spiritual foundation in his or her life with a definite direction of right and wrong and uh, a sense, a code of morals and moral conduct, those individuals are much harder to break down, to brainwash, to persuade, to follow the group, even if that group is quasi-religious. And so if we see groups like the evangelical fundamentalists or the truthers or other uh, cultic-type-minded individuals trying to recruit or break these people down, they're more apt to say, no, I know what it is that I believe, and what you're saying to me doesn't make sense, it doesn't resonate, it doesn't feel right, it doesn't feel moral, uh, it is void of peace, it is void of love, it is void of compassion, it is void of all the things that God or Christ stand for, and therefore I do not accept your bill of goods. Even if you're putting a religious or Christian tag on it, these individuals uh, are less apt to be recruited into the mass mindset. But now the interesting part about it is, is usually these individuals who are more stable in their thinking, rooted in what they believe, not easily moved, are people who have an individual spirituality and relationship with the divine. They're not necessarily a, a part of a group or a group telling them how they should believe. Because this is what we must think about. If we immerse ourselves in the group, if the group goes astray, we go astray with it. If the group goes off the rails, we go off the rails with it. And this is where religion and critical thinking, a strong sense of self, and your personal one-on-one -on -one relationship with God, that's where it really matters. And this is one of the things uh, many of you know that I've been reading and studying the Urantia book for about five years now. And uh, it's, it's one of the things that really stands out to me as far as a spiritual book goes, is that it's very um, adamant and speaks over and over again about the personal experience of the individual with God. Because no one can tell you how to believe in God or that you should believe in God or even explain God to you. And see, that's a problem we have in our world for many, many years now. We have a lot of groups and religions out there telling other people how they should believe. And now the Arantia book isn't the only book that says this. There are others as well. 
But it's very important that we have a personal experience with God. And I'm very impressed with that because that's what I've always felt all of my life since since I was a little child. And as I grew, and even though for a time that was taken away from me by religion because they talked me into believing that those personal experiences were not valid or that they were possibly evil or that I was being deceived. I was believing wrongly. But something in me kept pulling me back and pulling me back. And eventually I said, I have to listen to this inner voice, this inner knowing because I believe it is the Spirit of God that I've known since I was a little child telling me that I knew him personally. I have experienced him. And not to be talked out of those experiences by anyone. And every individual I know who has that mindset, who's had that experience, they are the ones who are much harder to be broken down and assimilated into this fragmented reality that we now live in. We're like living in a world of various cults, all telling their followers who to follow, who to believe, who to vote for, who's right, who's wrong, who's good. And yet they deny It's like being in the cults, you know, I I won't mention names, but there's one particular uh, Christian cult that's uh, pretty popular worldwide, and uh, at one point there was a lot of uh, sexual misconduct and, uh, you know, uh, elders abusing, uh, you know, young men, young boys, you know, in the the higher echelon of uh, the organization. And it was proven that these things happen, but yet the cult turned around and said, well, that never happened. Our wonderful, knowledgeable elders would never do that. And everybody just fell in line with it. We believe what we are told. We will deny this reality for the sake of the group or for the sake of belonging or for whatever reason. And that's a very dangerous place to be. But I'd like to read something from the Arantia book that really really caught my attention this morning and, and why I wanted to do this particular show. And this is from paper 103, section 8, verses 4 and 5. And it reads... If you truly believe in God, by faith know him and love him. Do not permit the reality of such an experience to be in any way lessened or detracted from by the doubting insinuations of science, the cavilling of logic, the postulates of philosophy, or the clever suggestions of well-meaning souls who would create a religion without God. The certainty of the God-knowing religionist should not be disturbed by the uncertainty of the doubting materialist. Rather, should the uncertainty of the unbeliever be mightily challenged by the profound faith and unshakable certainty of the experiential believer. And I like that saying, the certainty of the God-knowing religionist should not be disturbed. But rather, should the uncertainty of the unbeliever be mightily challenged by the profound faith and unshakable certainty of the experiential believer. What is the experiential believer? The person who has had an experience with God in their lives. And that experience just might be an inner guidance that's been with them all their lives. A feeling of being loved and watched over and guided. 
It just might be a deep knowing things you've experienced in your life. You know that they were not coincidence. There was a divine hand guiding you and helping you, maybe even rearranging events to help you get from point A to point B because you look back and you realize you couldn't have done it with your own power, your own knowledge, or your own material wealth. And somehow you overcame all of these impossibilities because there was this force that just seemed to be there with you. You may have had an experience that we would call paranormal. You may have seen an angel or, you know, some other thing that changed your life. You know that you experienced it and it was a gift from God to help you in a time of need. Whatever that experience was that you experienced, it is your experience and it is not invalid if you know that you truly experienced it. And we should never allow anyone to take those experiences away from us. And the funny thing is that many times those who try to take those experiences away from us will be even other people who say that they believe. Because the believer will always try to talk the knower out of what he knows. Because the believer has never experienced those things. He or she has not necessarily had a direct personal experience with God, but only through what he has been told he should experience. Go to church, read your Bible, pray, you know, whatever they tell their followers they have to do in order to be believers. And many other things are looked at as being magical thinking or evil or it just doesn't happen. And so they're closed off to those experiences. And God's not going to invade anybody's life if they don't want him to, believer or unbeliever. And so the believer, for the sake of this argument, we will say is often somebody who has been told or taught what to believe, and that individual will always try to talk the knower out of what he knows and what he or she has experienced. And there's an awful lot of that going on in the world right now, as I said before, in politics, in society, in religion, in just about every facet of life. There are those who believe they are on the right path, believe they're supporting the right people, believe they're supporting the right political party, believe that their version of God is the only right version of God, believe their religion is the only one true religion and everybody else is in such great, you know, abject error. And those people will always deny reality. They will always deny the experience and try to steal from the one who knows and steal from the one who has experienced what he or she knows or experienced. But see, ladies and gentlemen, we can't let them do that. We have to guard those experiences as sacred treasures in our lives because God gave them to us. We experience them for a reason. We experience that guidance, that love, that angel, whatever it was, for a reason. And who is any man to come in and say, that's invalid. That was evil. That was wrong. That never happened. You're delusional. You're crazy. When these very people deny what is happening right in front of them. Isn't that a switch? But that's the world we live in right now. 
So I would say to each and every one of you listening to this show, listening to this podcast, hold on to your personal experiences. Hold on to your moral compass, your sense of right and wrong, your foundation of who you are. If you're the only person in your entire neighborhood, city, or state that sees reality for what it is and everybody else is calling you crazy, then be crazy. Did they not crucify Jesus for the same reason? You're not conforming to our religion. You're not conforming to our law. You're not conforming to our sense of reality and our societal norms? Didn't they free the early Christians to the lions in the arenas for the same reason? So ladies and gentlemen, you're in good company if you're persecuted, and you will be. But don't let them steal your experiences. Don't let them steal your joy. Don't let them talk you out of what is right. Don't let them talk you into having a distorted sense of reality and faith and belief. Hold on to what you know. And most importantly, hold on to what you know spiritually. When you see all this spiritual chaos going on in the world and religious people acting like animals and terrorists and bandits, Hold on to what you know and hold on to that spiritual experience because it is that spiritual foundation that will strengthen you to go through the storms ahead, to weather the persecution, to have peace when everybody around you is against you because you will know that you are standing with God, you are standing with Christ, and you are standing with every other true believer that has and ever will live on this earth who stood for what is right, stood for love and righteousness and decency and morality. Don't let them turn your simple and pure faith into this political, judgmental, hateful, distorted religion that so many are carrying around these days. Hold on to what is right, and your sense of peace will prevail no matter what this world throws at you. Because you will know that God stands with you. And maybe, just maybe, by the grace of God, you'll be able to open up a few other people's eyes and ears and hearts before everything is said and done. Because ultimately, that's what we're here for, to help one another. But the sad spiritual spiritual reality might be that we may not be able to help very many. Because narrow is that road that leads to life and few are on it and broad is the way that leads to to destruction and many are on that road and they don't want to turn around. They don't want to turn back. Through that distorted sense of reality, they believe that they're on the right road and those who are following the narrow path that leads to life and love and peace and goodness and compassion and loving your neighbor as yourself, somehow you're wrong, you're stupid, you're evil, you're blinded, you're ignorant. But don't let them entice you to walk that broad path with you. Hold on to what you have and hold on to your personal experience with God as you go forward. Because in the end, you will be absolutely glad that you did. I thank you so much for listening to this show today, and I hope you got something out of it. I hope you really think about this conversation. There was uh, quite a bit we went over here today, but I think it was all necessary, and 
I really feel that uh, these are the things that the Spirit wanted me to talk about today. And so I did. So until next time, stay safe, stay well, stay in love, stay in peace, and keep holding on to what you know. Keep holding on to those personal experiences and what you know to be true about God and about faith. And don't let it go for anyone or anything. Especially if it has the religious or Christian tag on it and it's judgmental and it's political and hateful and divisive and exclusive telling you we're the only way we're the only way to God we're the only way we're the true religion follow us usually those are the people who have everything but the truth and we must recognize it for what it is thank you again for listening and I will talk to you next time here on the spirit side